Ladies and gentlemen, this is your Captain Wingspan TT speaking, and it's time for A C R Airspace Control Request. We're coming in for a landing on Lane B. That's bracket B of the Assassin's Creed Revelations Top Tier Tactics Xbox 360 January 2012 Tournament. Okay, and we're here with Templar Killer, Blake Draco, Dark Assassin, Dinalaristic, and Freaky Chuckles, and of course yours truly, your captain. Now, um, Bracket A, we saw Bracket A, we had some really good gameplay from Ruby RK 93 from everyone else, but Ruby pretty much owned it, he owned me, um, I'm pretty sure he has the bill of sale somewhere on his desk. Um, but jumping into B here, this was a really interesting set of matches, I think it was generally a lot closer Okay, then the previous matches from bracket A, I think that the players here, you know, were just a little bit overall closer in skill. They're also a little bit closer in total experience. We have a, a very much more even distribution of um, prestige and level and all that stuff. And Blake Draco just can't catch a break because I got him as my contract twice in a row and I was running uh, my favorite smoke and throwing knives here. He's got his smoke too, but I have the long lasting smoke. So you can cut. Oh shit! Okay, right, right, I forgot that happened. Um, <laughs> well, see, I remember right after it happened, I, I had asked him over the microphone, like, oh, does he have the double uh, length smoke? And the correct answer was yes, he does. I did realize that the thespian was my, uh, was my pursuer there. Freaky Chuckles coming in for the 300 point kill. But the thing about throwing knives, you gotta remember, is although it can stop your pursuer, it can slow them down and allow you to get an uncontested stun, um, you also, during the animation of throwing knives, your character takes about a two foot step towards the person. They step two feet and then throw the throwing knives. So if the person's already within like five feet of you, you can't realistically use throwing knives to defend yourself. Now at this point, you'll see, I see there's people on the roof, so I start walking away. Why? Because if that guy was my pursuer, which he's clearly not because I still have a pursuer, I didn't want to be right next to the edge so he would be able to just drop down on me and get me. That's the thing. If you know, if you think, if you see someone's on the roof, you hear the whispers, if they're in range, and you think it's possible that they could be your pursuer, don't stand next to the fucking roof. You're giving them a free uncontested kill. And the Dark Assassin here is just filling up my meter waiting for incognito here comes the thespian it's clear that she's my pursuer and here we go BAM people always ask me how do I know it's my pursuer well first of all um, I'm psychic but aside from that I cheat but aside from all those things there's a couple things you need to know you know there's different now see what I did there. I threw the throwing knives for I knew he has got the smoke bomb so I wanted now see look at that because I'm patient I was talking about patience and I fucked up before I know I fucked up in my videos I know I've said be patient and then run into things okay um, I, I threw the throwing knives, I waited to see if you'd smoke or mute, knowing that these are good players who would probably do that, and then just stayed outside of range. Now, again, going back to like, how did I know that someone was my pursuer? Well, there's a couple of reasons, but first of all, you just want to listen to whispers. People who are your pursuer are going to want to maintain, oh, this is very smart. People are you, who are your pursuer want to maintain line of sight on you. So if you see someone who's trying to maintain line of sight on you, like, if you see a character you think that they are your pursuer. Try to break line of sight. Go around a corner, put a pole in between you, because as long as they don't have line of sight on you, they're losing meter, um, they could lose their lock on you, and no one wants that to happen. See right there? I know that guy right there. He's my pursuer. He's walking around the edge so he can get line of sight on me. He's smart. These players are smart, all right? They're making, um, see, they're making attempts to, st to maintain line of sight without being obvious, and that's what's important. That he knows that I'm the guy. I'm gonna get up here, to kind of like force him, see he dropped the smoke bomb, I wait for him to drop the smoke bomb and then I come in for the kill, okay? Now I'm not doing great here, I am in second to last place, these are very good players people. Everyone is like, and when I say very good players, alright, are these are these people at the top of the ladder? Are they Konoha Shinobi? No, alright? But they know what they're doing, they've been watching videos here, and that was kind of, oh shit. I saw that um, she was my uh, pursuer, but I wasn't locked on, I should have got that sooner, and at that point, I had realized that Generalistic was using a disguise, right? Why is that? Because I saw my line of sight meter and my proximity meter light up like crazy. I don't see him anywhere, all right? And I, there's this NPC running towards me. There's no way it's NPC. And again, here, now because this player's smart, I'm not going to wait for her to get in range. And I actually set up the kill there. I'm not competing for points. These people are the ones in the tournament. I'm just here for the lulls. I'm here to facilitate the taping and all that stuff. This guy's going to realize I'm his pursuer. But this is where throwing knives come in, you know? A lot of people like, um, yeah, look at that. He tried to throwing knives me. Um, 
Then he's gonna go over here, get around, and when, see that was smart, alright, he's smart, he tried to put an obstacle in the way, but when someone's on the roof, putting an obstacle on them is not gonna help. And, okay, why did that happen? Okay, that happened because when someone jumps off the roof, when they land, for the half a second when they land, when they're still in the landing matrixy animation, um, they cannot kill you, okay? You always get the stun, um, first. Now, he, of course, he gets a contract on me again, Dark Assassin. Dark Assassina, double zero. I think I would have gone with Dark Assassin, 007, but that's just me. Um, old school James Bond, um, but whatever. <clears throat> uh, what was I saying? I don't actually remember. The point being, oh yes, if you know someone is your pursuers on the roof, you A, you want to stay the fuck away from the roof. There we go. Oh shit. I don't know why that happened. Um, you want to stay away from the roof, okay? And what that means is, okay, you break line of sight, okay? Oh, great. Um, you break line of sight and you want to stay approximately, um, how do I explain this? You want to you want to stay about 20 degrees from the lowest angle on the roof because when it comes down to it I was waiting for him to get smoke bomb right so you use throwing knives at people and they panic and they use their smoke bombs oh shit um anyway what I'm saying is the taller the roof is the higher the person can jump to kill you like a roof like this a person could jump about five feet from the roof like if you're standing on the roof and you drew a 20 degree angle down get your protractors out people all right you can jump about 20 degrees down about five feet to the ground if you are on the roof on the top of like Gandalfo you know the upper level you can jump about like 10 12 feet down all right if you are on and see look at that I use the throwing knife he can't run away so I get the full incognito kill um, uh, if you're on the roof on top of one of these buildings when it's not deathmatch and see why I'm going to this corner because no one can roof me from this far away you can jump like 20 30 feet from the roof all right so this is important to understand there's a general distance that's about 20 degrees down from the top of the roof um, what was I gonna say about throwing knives people always ask me about throwing knives should I put points into throwing knives for lowering the target speed, okay? No. The answer is no. Why? Well, you see, okay, when you have throwing knives with zero points, it kind of like, you can get a target speed of like minus, t you know, 80%. And then you can get a target speed of, uh, boom, in the face. You can get a target speed of 75%, 70%. That's great and all. It would be great if that's how it works. But the thing is, throwing knives always reduce people's target speed by like, over 70% and why is that like I'm talking down to 30% of their normal speed because while you're hit by throwing knives you can't go into high profile you can't fast walk so automatically you can't walk fast you can't jog you can't run all right so effectively yes your walk speed is reduced by like 20% oh my god does it get any better now I didn't realize he was gonna get stunned or I would have waited for the focus um, or maybe I shouldn't have, considering that was about to happen in dinner lorristic. I feel kind of bad for getting the open stun, but whatever. Um, if you get an open stun on someone 90% of the time, they either fucked up um, or they're terrible. You're not going to get an open stun really because you deserved it. Um, there's no such thing as deserved open stuns. There's really no reason why a good player should get open stunned, and I've been open stunned. You know, sometimes I'm like, my hand is on the right analog stick instead of on the buttons, and by the time I go to press it, like, it just shouldn't happen, and I feel bad every time I open stun someone. I'm like, they didn't, they didn't, not like this, not like this. You remember that from the Matrix? No, probably not, because it was a dumb line. No one's gonna remember. Um, and this is all about patience. I could have started working the freaky chuckles earlier. He's probably thinking that uh, that guy right there was his pursuer because he got smoked by him. All right, but it wasn't. It was me. And this is why. This is why also it's good in deathmatch, you know, I know in the earliest deathmatch videos I said the opposite of this, but it's been a while, I've played a lot more games since then, i spent a lot of time learning, okay, um, it's, oh shit, is this my pursuer? Yes. And you see what I, okay, hold on, I'll get back to my original point. I feel in general in deathmatch, the best thing to do, because it's a small map, is to stay in a, in the somewhat public open area, stay blended into a group that way, A, okay, A, Wherever your target is, you can get an early line of sight on them, all right? B, you can start building incognito meter faster because I'm pretty sure the meter builds a little faster. Look at this. Again, throwing knives and then patience, all right? Uh, when you're against bad players, just go in for the kill. But good players, throwing knives, wait for the smoke bomb on you, then move in for the kill once they've wasted their ability. They might still have a second ability they use on you, but if they use both their abilities, most players are going to be very afraid to use both their abilities on you. 
Um, but you stay in the middle of the group, you build your meter, you allow yourself to kind of like... Oh, I dropped the smoke too, but that's it. I'm pretty sure he's got the long elastic smoke and he's going to get out of it first. And we got the contested kill. That's pretty much the end of the round. Um, this was Bracket B, Deathmatch, against Freaky Chuckles, Templar Killer, Blake Draco, Dark Assassin, and Din Dinilaristic. Okay? Um, I can't make fun of his name. My name doesn't, like, fucking mean anything. I'm Wingspan TT. I hope you all enjoyed this match against some great players. Obviously, I think I did very well in this round of Deathmatch. I hope you learned something, and I hope you'll come back for the next video of ACR. Har.